Okay, let's talk about homeschooling high school math for the upcoming school year 2021 uh, to 2022. And what I want to do in this video is give you some things to be thinking about as you um, get yourself ready for this next school year. So before we get going, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and I've been constructing uh, online courses for many, many years and been working with homeschoolers for a good oh, 15 years. So uh, we've had several thousands of homeschoolers take uh, uh, my courses in pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. So really, uh, it's been a great experience for me uh, and a great education because homeschooling is so diverse. It's just not one way to homeschool, and there's a lot of different philosophies, uh, curriculum out there, different ways, different approaches. So it's even kind of... Uh, growing exponentially, especially with uh, the pandemic and the school lockdowns and a lot of public school students who have been displaced from the actual classroom who are now effectively homeschoolers and all everybody trying to figure out, you know, online learning, et cetera. So it's been, um, you know, pretty crazy, as you well know, um, uh, within this last year or two. Um, but anyways, with all that being said, there's a lot of opportunity to um, homeschool in high school mathematics, and I think now more than ever, you're really going to have to, uh, you know, start your research early because there's even more options out there, and you really, um, you know, don't want to pick the wrong program if you can avoid it for your child. So I'm going to go ahead and use all my uh, years of experience as a as a school teacher, as uh, someone who's constructed online. Um, homeschool curriculum for many, many years, worked with homeschoolers, um, all of that. And as a parent of uh, somebody who's graduated high school, gone to college, my son has done all that. So I'm going to talk to you uh, here and give you my best advice so you can have a successful 2021-2022 school year with high school math. So let's get right to it. So the first thing is you want to go ahead and start your selection process uh, as early as possible. So I'm making this video in March of 2021. Uh, you know, the earlier the better, okay? And you want to be kind of constructing a list of candidates, uh, curriculum or programs that you're interested in uh, for your child. So, you know, you know how your child, uh, you know your child better than anyone else. And you want to be thinking about, okay, what's worked with them, worked for them previously, what curriculum? Uh, so if they're using a particular curriculum right now or a learning program that's working for them and they have your next course available, let's say, uh, your child's taking Algebra 1 with a particular uh, uh, online course, well, then I think, you you know, and they're being successful and, you, and that's a good high-quality uh, course, then you might want to just consider, you know, sticking with that program, okay? Don't want to change just for change sake. And I will say this much, too, um, for monetary uh, purposes, your budget uh, if you can, stretch your budget and pay whatever that curriculum um, cost uh, to continue with it. If it's been successful, that's that's really what you want to try to do. Okay, if you're changing uh, because the curriculum that you're using is is good and it's working, but you're looking to save money, that's a big risk. Okay, so try to see if you can find um, you know find it in your uh, budget to stick with the program that's working. So that's another consideration. But you want to go ahead and start kind of researching various candidates out. Make yourself a little list. And uh, you could, you know, find these candidates by just doing online uh, research. Or if you're part of a homeschool group, you could be speaking with other homeschoolers and kind of seeing what uh, they're using. But you want to make yourself a little uh, um, kind of list of candidates. And uh, from that, then you want to kind of start you know, researching those individually until you can come up with your top two or three candidates. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is you want to focus on quality. This is huge, okay? Just because your child likes something, liking a program does not necessarily <laughs> equal learning, okay? I could tell you this from, and I'm not going to uh, name any names out there, but if something could feel great. Although, hey, I like this program. It's an excellent program. It's it's fun to use, and I feel really successful about it. However, you're really not uh, your child's not getting the the quality of education that they need at the high school at high school level mathematics. High school level mathematics is 
you know, it's advanced, okay? I mean, you're starting with Algebra 1, generally speaking, and you're going to Geometry, uh, Algebra 2, and then so forth. But if you're going to be successful in college, you know, you're going to, you know, most students are going to have to take, you know, well beyond college algebra, you know, or probably calculus. And, you know, for me, I have a degree in mathematics, not an education degree. I have a degree in, in uh, mathematics, and I have a master's degree. So I don't know what it's like to uh, take these these courses. You need to have a strong mathematical education, and it starts in high school. If you don't get it in high school, you're gonna, uh, you know, your troubles are gonna just grow exponentially, you know, as you you, uh, you know matriculate through your high school years in terms of taking uh, entrance exams, placement exams, and even right now, there's a lot of schools talking about uh, test optional with the SAT or ACT, but I wouldn't be fooled by that in terms of, well, we don't really have to take the SAT or ACT anymore. Well, that's not necessarily the case. There's a lot of colleges that are still, uh, you know, asking for those scores, but <clears throat> uh, it doesn't make a difference. You're still going to, your, your child's still going to have to take a placement exam like Alex or uh, the AccuPlacer to place into various level courses. The bottom line, you know, my main point here is that they have to learn math, okay, to be successful in college. So just because you like something and it's going pretty well doesn't necessarily mean that they're getting the, uh, the most comprehensive education. So really focus on quality. Now, what are some characteristics of quality? Well, I would say you want to ask yourself, who's teaching this course? Who is the actual teacher? Right? Is it an actual math teacher or is it some sort of program where you don't know who designed it? See, like, for example, in my program, my tablet class math programs, you're getting me as the te your, uh, teacher for your child, right? So not only do I have the formal uh, education background, I have the actual experience of working with actual real-life students in school, knowing, hey, that these, you know, uh, uh, young folks are going to be applying for colleges. And, you know, a lot of my students went off to the top, top colleges. A lot of them went to state schools. A lot of them went into the military doesn't make a difference, but, you know, I've had plenty of uh, my students go off to the very top colleges in the uh, United States, and you have to have a super comprehensive math foundation in order to, uh, to do that, okay? So you want to know who is a teacher, okay, who, who designed the curriculum, all that stuff, okay? So focus on quality, not necessarily popularity, all right? And definitely not, you know, by, hey, you know, uh, my kid seems to like this, um, and other, you know, it's, I like it. That's good. And you should like the program, but you also kind of have to, you know, again, um, do your due diligence to see if it's a high uh, quality, comprehensive, uh, uh, program. Okay. So let's talk about another thing here. Even if you make, uh, a selection, you kind of vetted through, you know, your candidates and you said, okay, Hey, this one looks like the one we're going to go with, they could think it's going to work. You're optimistic and positive about it. Still be ready to make adjustments, okay? You don't really know how something is going to work until you start using a program, okay? And I've seen this um, time and time again throughout many uh, years of working with homeschoolers that you'll commit or a, a homeschooler will commit to a program and they'll just stick with it. It's not working and they'll just stick with it, you know, month after month after month. And now they're halfway through the school year and, you know, everything is just, you know, terrible. You know, child's frustrated. Uh, they're not learning. And now you've wasted, you know, four, five, six months on a curriculum that's not working for your child, although you selected it and you thought it would work. So, you you know, you got to be ready to make some adjustments. Now, you don't want to make an adjustment right away. In other words, you don't want to select a program and... Um, you know, after one week or one month, make a change. But, you know, if it's not working, and again, you know, in a pretty short order of time, one to two months, you need to make some adjustments. Now, you may not necessarily uh, have to change curriculums, but you may have to look at, you know, how you're managing the process or maybe get your child some supplemental help because maybe the curriculum they're using, you know, you could switch curriculum, but even, you know, by doing all of that, you might, your child might need even more help uh, in math. So again, you're going to have to be flexible, but don't just, you know, stay in a, 
bad situation, you know, make sure, you know, you do something. And that kind of leads me to my uh, fourth point here is that it takes time, okay? If you're new to homeschooling, it's this is a, a journey and you're going to get better uh, through the years. I've uh, met some amazing homeschoolers and been homeschooling for, you know, decades. Uh, and I'm it just, it's so impressive to see uh, parents and how they manage uh, their children. They're really, you know, I have the highest regard for the, uh, for those. But there's a lot of um, you that are coming to homeschooling brand new and it's intimidating and it, it should be, okay? It's a, it's a lot of responsibility and there's a lot of information out there telling you how to do this, including my video. I'm, um, I'm giving you suggestions, but you're going to get inundated by a lot of people who think they know what's best for you, okay? Like, oh, my child did great with this program. You need to do that program or you should come school this way, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I think um, it's going to take time for you to figure out what, what works for you. But if you invest the time and you stick with it, the benefit of uh, homeschooling is tremendous, okay? And um, I can tell you that your child can receive a top-notch, high, high-quality math education and do extremely well in any circumstances uh, after uh, high school. You know, they can go off to the top colleges or do whatever. So you can definitely um, enjoy the benefits of you know your child going to a top, regular, to say, public school, but it takes time and it takes uh work and investment. Okay. And that's why it kind of goes back. I'll kind of finish up where I started, you know, start your process early. Okay. You don't want to be scrambling, um, at the end, you know, thinking about, Oh, what am I going to do? And just kind of just pick something, right? That's not the best way to go. One of the, uh, thought too here in your selection process, when you do, um, uh, make your final selections, have your child, uh, involved. So once you've kind of, you know, looked through and you've kind of picked your top two, three um, candidates, what you think, you know, you might be looking to do uh, for this next coming up school year. At that point, this is where I think is a good time for you to introduce these programs to your child. You don't want to say, hey, what, you know, you don't want to have your child involved. It's I wouldn't recommend it in the selection process in terms of the research process. OK, that's kind of your responsibility. Um let them focus on other things. But once you get down to the last two, three uh, programs that you're considering, then you want to bring them in and, and have them sample uh, some free previews or take a free trial and then kind of see how they respond to that. Now, there are some programs that you can't really do that with. We actually have to buy the program to test it. I'm not a big fan of those programs because I think you should, uh, you know, my philosophy is uh, try before you buy. So try to you know, don't make a financial commitment uh, until you've kind of sampled the program. So hopefully you'll be able to do that with the programs that you're interested in. But uh, once you've done all that and you kind of see, your, the, get your feedback from your child, at that time, then you can, you know, hopefully have all the uh, feedback you need, uh, you know, from your research to make a decision. And you just kind of have to kind of go by faith, say, you know what, I think this is what we're going to do and just make a decision, be decisive and, um, you know, uh, be ready to make adjustments if necessary. Okay. So let's go and wrap up this video. Um, you know, I've been on YouTube now for a good 12 years, at least the time of this video, I love posting, um, anything that's related to math, uh, math problems, math advice, etc. So hopefully, um, you know, you'll consider subscribing because I am posting all the time. Yeah, if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Uh, you know, how long have you been homeschooling? What courses are you looking to homeschool? Do you have multiple children that you have to homeschool for? So all these type of situations I'm used to uh, working with families all over the place. It's really um, pretty been, uh, awesome to work with um, homeschoolers because, again, you know, everyone out there is so different. I think there was a time... Uh, maybe it's still that way right now that people said, oh, homeschooling, they kind of stereotyped homeschoolers as, oh, homeschoolers are, are, are like this. But I can tell you right now, nothing's further from the truth. There's so many different ways uh, to think about homeschooling uh, now. Uh, but with all those different opportunities and different uh, approaches also can come, um, you know, there can uh, you can have this confusion and then you can be overwhelmed by too many things 
again, that's why I'm making this video to help you kind of, you know, sort through your priority list. But again, I'm going to leave a link to my um, website and you can check out my homeschool math courses. I do have free previews, uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. Uh, I'm working on some more advanced mathematics, but uh, all my courses have taken me uh, years to build uh, super high quality instruction. So again, if you want to check that out, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschooling uh, journey. It's certainly worth it for you and your child if you stay committed to it. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.